in insurance, you just gotta show up, you know? You win. Most people never show up, so they don't win. I, like, like for me, I got to where about every 25 door knocks that I would make, mm -hmm. I would make a sale. So guess what I gotta do? So I went out to try to do 50 door knocks a day and make two sales a day. Yeah. They'll say, I wanna be <clears throat> successful no matter what, Nate. And you're like, go do this. Well, except for that, I really wanna be successful, but not if I have to do that. I so, wanna know what Cody Askins <laughs> brings in on a yearly basis. His staff, like, they're all like raising their hands in the background here. Come I on. probably- Just like a roundabout, like dude, half a million, I a pay million. my, I, I was selling, making, I made nine grand my first month. And I had a manager call me from like four hours away and said, hey, can you come? I got two new guys that are struggling. They ain't made money in months. Mm -hmm. Can you come help them make some sales? Can you come door knock with them? And they're like, he's like, cause they're trying to door knock like you are, but they ain't doing what you're doing. Right. I said, sure. And so I went up and we made five sales in one afternoon from cold door knocking. They thought it was the greatest thing in the world. I, I, I let them keep the business, you know, and, 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 and went home. Wow, that's, that's, that's Cody right there. And the whole way back, I'm like, I just found my calling. Yeah. That was it. I was like, I got more gratification and satisfaction helping them make money and, and, and the light bulb click for them than I did when I made a sale. And I said, if I ever get a chance to spend the rest of my life helping other people make money, I'll do it. So I am so excited about this, Cody. I'm so happy you're here at my house. Um, I know that you had me out to Missouri Boom. and you inter interviewed Marlon and myself. And yeah. I see you do you interview all these successful individuals um, in the insurance industry and some that aren't even in the insurance industry. And yeah. you get so much incredible you know, nuggets from these guys, right? What they did to succeed, how they succeed. And there's kind of like this underlining tone. And I get this question all the time, they go, how come it seems like all the people that are successful always have this like horrific story, like they were living in a trailer, yeah. you know, or they had no money, or they they grew up, uh, you know, in poverty. And and I talked about it. I said, well, I, I think that really drives us, right? It drives yeah, us yeah. to want to go out and never live that way again because we know what it's like. Yeah. And then on the flip side, I'm not saying you didn't have struggles, but what <clears throat> I so admire admired about you is for many things that I admire about you. But one of the things I noticed, I'm like on you didn't have like this horrific rough childhood, right? You, you, didn't, no. you didn't have where you were growing up in poverty and your, your mom was running around to yard sales and you were wearing hand-me-downs or you were getting the Atari when everyone yeah. else had their, you know, uh, the Nintendo <laughs> and I, they were playing yeah. that. I had shoes, you know? Yeah, you had shoes. You weren't, you know, weren't walking around barefoot and stuff. Yeah. So I wanted to take this chance to do what I've always wanted to do is interview you. Cause you're always interviewing everybody else, right? I want to yeah. pull the curtain back about Cody Askins, who you are, what motivates you, what drives you. Okay. Um, how did you become the success that you've become? I mean, in every area of your life prior to, to age 30. I mean, give me Thanks, start, start off a little bit like, you know, tell us your, your back. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people know what your back for, is. For those that haven't seen this happen, by the way, um, it's a little, it's less comfortable being in the hot seat and being interviewed <laughs> than the, the, the one, the interviewer, you know? Uh, but I promise, here's what I can guarantee. I, I, if Nate will ask the right questions, I'll share, and he will, because he's a freaking genius. I will share some stories about me and my childhood and everything else along the way. Some difficult stories to tell, by the way, um, that I've never shared before. That I can promise you, okay? So if you stay through this, I promise I'll do that, okay? Um, I'm I excited mean, about this, because I have a couple questions you're not prepared for <laughs> that I okay. just thought about before this yeah. that I'm gonna ask you towards the end, and I'm telling you what. Yeah. Those are gonna, yeah, we'll, we'll just the, lead them towards the end because they're gonna be the, the, the big dog questions that dude, I think would be pretty exciting. How, how about this setup though? I mean, seriously, we're in a 6,000 square foot mansion. Uh, I, no, they no, offered a state, like you know? I mean, <laughs> the dude drives a McLaren, a Bentley, he makes tons of money. Right, I, this interview is about him, but go ahead. I know, but dude, <laughs> I, I just like being in your presence. It's amazing. Um, yeah. So, I mean, he did beat my son in basketball yesterday. Yeah, you know, a 14 well, year old kid, he had to take it to yeah, him. But hey, yeah, that's, that's okay. Real, real impressive. <laughs> Uh, so there were moments that, um, yeah, I didn't have, uh, we weren't really, we weren't ever now. Where'd you grow up at? Where did, where did, I mean, where did you yeah, I grew up in Wynn, Arkansas. Okay. Um, W Y N N E. I, when I go to trainings, I, I say I was, I was born in, they would say, they say, where were you born? And I would say I was born in Arkansas. They would say, right. well, where, where, when they would say, no, not when, where I'm like, well, when, <laughs> uh, which is part of it. So I, I was born in Wynn, Arkansas. 
we did grow up in a, uh, most people don't know this, we, we, we did grow up when my dad first got in the insurance industry, brand new to the insurance industry. He started April 1st of 1990. He's a big part of my story. Um, and I was born July 9th of 1990, not to make Nate feel old uh, or anybody else watching that's old. Um, <laughs> but, but we lived in the, literally, it was, like, it was like an 800 square foot, two bed, one bath home. Okay, so you did experience a little bit of that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, when you're young, who do you? When I was know? young, I didn't yeah. know any better. But yeah. I'm, I'm, but but I, what I saw is is my dad and his story and him go from literally, honestly nothing, like literally nothing, to where he is now, and it really got my attention to what's possible. As a kid, wow. I was always a dreamer. You know, you always mm -hmm. talk about how you always wrote all these things and said, "I will be rich one day." You know, I want this, 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 and. Dude, I, I thought those things as well as a kid. It's kind of funny when you interview successful people, they wanted the things they have, yeah. but they had to want them first before they got them. Yep. And uh, growing up, there's a lot of things I wanted. I felt like I, felt like I was, my, one thing my parents did well is they instilled, and I see you do it with Alex, which I love, they instill a lot of confidence in me. Mm -hmm. You know, They made me believe that I could do anything I want to do. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. And a lot, a lot of the kids grow up that way. No, and, and, and honestly, if I, when and if, I'm, you know, Lauren and I are able to have kids, I'm going to try to instill that same confidence in, in, in he or she. Well, um, you're doing that to my son yesterday. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's awesome when you hang around successful people because my son's 14, right? And yeah. he, he, he does like 15 minutes of personal growth every day. And then yep. he emails me, what did you learn? How can That's you awesome. apply it to your life, right? That's awesome. And what's so cool, I think people, you know, it's just going to be chills because, I mean, being around you and Bradley Hannon and, and your, your, your team and, uh, you know, Sam Wolf was over here last night. Yep. We're all hanging out <clears throat> to see just the impact you guys had on my son. I mean, he was in heaven. He was yeah. in heaven. Like, he was out there playing basketball. You guys were in the pool. And just seeing how high-level, successful people operate, I mean, that's a school that, like, that that last night, yeah. just having him around that, was, yeah. is, is priceless. He's I a couldn't good, pay that much in school tuition. He's a good kid. There's no doubt yeah, about it. it was Super awesome. good kid. So you're growing up. You're watching your dad go from nothing to something, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, where did you where did you uh, kind of go from there? I mean, it, it, as a kid, when did you start to recognize that? I guess was it even high school? Was it in college? I mean, really was. I that? would say probably when I was. Um, well, I, I always. It helped that I was always good at sports, and I really believe athletes. That, I think that's huge. Yeah, I, yeah, I really think athletes that do well, it instills confidence in other parts of their life, especially business. So when we look for salespeople, we try to find ex-athletes that were successful, and we used to run an ad called Sports Minded. Boom. On the top. Because it's like you're an athlete, you're used to coaching, you're used you to, get you know, it. you're stronger, you have a little bit more uh, armor build up. You're not yeah. like, you know, someone, you know, you don't crumble like a tent in the middle of a windstorm when you get corrected or, or given corrective criticism. Yeah. And, you, and you're used to that. You like that challenge and that, that win. That, well, so. that's exactly what, what, like. What athletics did you play? I played baseball. Yeah. Um, I mean, I played baseball the most. I played baseball for, I don't know, 12, 13, what 14 position? years. Uh, shortstop mostly. And then oh, later in Mars, life. Yes, yeah. he was the best, right? The shortstop. Later in life, pitcher. Okay, um, okay. Pitched a lot. I, I got to where I played at home school and high school, so I really didn't really elevate to the next level per se. I probably right. I was better at, at at baseball than basketball. Okay, but I'm one that and you're pretty I, good at basketball. Yeah, so I'm okay. So we made this bet, right? Because I, I said, okay, great. <laughs> I, I wanted uh, him. I said, don't be easy on my son, right? Because I want him to see. Well, your like, son's like six foot and pretty good too. He's super good. He's yeah. super good, right? But he's got to work on his speed and his quickness. I would say quickness. Yeah. And I wanted Cody, I said, hey, don't, don't be as my son. He goes, well, I don't want to like, I said, no, go as hard as you can, go as hard. And he, he did, he was really good. But he bet, we bet, we made a bet that uh, if you, for every point that he scored on you, you yeah. give him a hundred bucks. That's right. And it was kind of cool because he hits the ball, right? And I go, hey, <clears throat> Cody's really good. You got one shot to score a point to get your hundred bucks. As soon as he gets that ball back, because you're playing make it, take it. Yeah. He's gonna run the, the table on you, and it, you're up like eight nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Eight nothing, oh, and then uh, finally he, he got a point, but he was so excited you, about it. But, yeah. So you're obviously really good at basketball. You're out there like literally almost dunking. See, in, but in basketball. well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> but you're an all around like just you. This is why I admire so much. You excel at everything. I mean, you guys were out there playing in my pool basketball. I think it was like two and a half hours. Long I mean, time. It, it, you guys were laying it down. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. talk about yeah. <clears throat> driven, talk about wanting to win, talking about wanting to lose. Yeah. Right? I went outside to come play and I saw Cody with a shirt off. It looks like freaking Hercules. I wanted to wash my clothes on his on his Jesus. <laughs> I walked right back inside, so I'm not taking my <laughs> shirt. I ain't taking my shirt off out here. My wife, my wife, especially my wife's around. I was like, oh, oh hey, my honey, gosh. don't go 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 look at Cody outside. I don't want to. That's you know. hilarious. I mean, <laughs> Well, you notice that with successful people, they they have that they they are very competitive. 
Like we played for like two and a half hours outside in the pool. I know. Like tackling each other, like freaking football basketball. And it was nuts. I didn't want to lose a game, you know? Like that's just uh I can't wait to get, get that from the my golf simulator tonight. Yeah, exactly. Can you play golf too? Yeah. I will absolutely okay, crush so you. I will destroy starter. you on that Oh, thing. here we go. Here we go. Okay, let's write. Bet you 100 now. So you're a bas- baseball player. You're a basketball player. Like, yeah. do you have any influential coaches in that, that really kind of helped um, in, spirit? Because I had some crappy coaches, yeah, yeah. and I had some really good well, coaches. Well, in, oh. in good ways and bad ways, by the way. Okay. Okay. So, so here's tell a, us about that. So, so good-wise, I had several amazing coaches throughout my life that were very – including my father, who was a coach for baseball for me, and some basketball, for that were always, like – putting me in difficult situations or when there was a game winning shot, like, you know what I mean? Uh, it's your turn, you know, or like, Hey, we're down. We need you to, you know, freaking. And what did it teach you when you didn't execute when you were in that situation? Yeah. What did it teach you when you did execute in that situation? W- when I didn't, it taught me that dude, uh, I'm like, I get excited and motivated when, when I'm challenged. Mm-hmm. If I don't have a challenge, I get bored. Like I stopped playing baseball. Most people don't know this. I stopped playing baseball because it, we were winning every city championship for a decade yeah. and I stopped being challenged. And I was have to go, go, go start traveling the country. Or, but instead I was like, you know what? Like in Arkansas with the three teams or when you say you won? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Not four maybe. <laughs> There, no, there's like two and a half. half. Right. The, so, so they, and that's when they were, you put the ball in the tee, right? You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. So you're dominating Well, well there that. wasn't any... It's it, boring when that starts I happening. didn't start playing basketball until I was 10, I think, okay. at all. Wow. And it was because I was like, this looks fun. It's, it's faster paced than baseball. I'm going to try that. Baseball is boring. And, yeah, I couldn't handle it. Can you imagine me playing baseball? Oh. Dude, I was, and I was five foot tall. I wasn't really any good. Okay. I was, I was, I was, but, but what I did, what I realized is I got to be able to get really fast, quick feet. Like I, I'm always a fastest dude on the court no matter when I play. And, and I got to get really good at handling the ball. And, and if I foot tall, there you ain't a lot more right. you can do. You so know? these coaches so, put you in a situation, you have an opportunity to execute. What did yeah. you learn most when you like, well, cut you off? I changed the subject Well, quick. here's what when most people, execute. yeah, here's what most people forget is, is like, like, okay, so like Alex yesterday on the basketball court, I noticed a few things that I used to struggle with. Mist- uh-huh. like, like they were bad habits of mine, two of them. One, I wanted, I, I wanted to fly through the ba- backboard and make a layup as fast as I could. Mm-hmm. Well. Great players slow down and hyper focus and make sure they make the shot. Like there's no point in getting there if you're gonna miss, right? right. The second piece is I used to take take off from too far away and I was extending and it's a harder layup to make. Yep, yep. So I would just take an extra step that I learned late in high school. If I just take an extra step, oh by the way, it's, it's easier and I'm focused on making it, so I'm gonna make it. And so I think in business and life and sports, whatever, most people in those defining moments that they don't really like. Like something clicks for me where I get even more focused. Like, okay, now is the time. Like, like my dad always used to tell me in basketball, he could tell that I was like focused and in the zone if I slapped the floor on defense. Like other teams coming down, I'm at the top of the key about to guard their point guard and I would slap the floor. And it's kind of a, kind of a more of a showy, confident thing. Sure. Like, like I'm ready for them, yeah. you know, but, but he could tell, he's like, dude, when, when you did that, like he's like, he's dude, like you, were, on. you were on, you know? Uh, but there was also some moments with coaches that most people don't know about. Like, for example, I won't say his name, but in, in college, I had three different college coaches. One of them during the middle. What know, sport was this? Was this basketball? This was basketball. Okay. Did he, any other sports you played was that it? Uh, I, play, yeah, I played soccer. I played, I you're telling us, you're I played water, golf water, as a kid. Water polo. I played and, water yeah. polo in Costa Rica. <laughs> that was, that anyway, was so you had kid, this coaching? You I pretty, pretty much coach? played anything I could. Yeah, yeah you're, you're a total all-around athlete. You, you, like I said, you excel at everything you do. Which yeah, is, I don't know about that, is, but... I, I don't know about how much more I can hang out with you because you start to make me, you know. Dude, you, you would smoke <laughs> me at mortgage protection cells, you know. So I had one coach that okay. there was a couple moments in my life that like got my attention, okay. by the way. So one, I'll get to the coach in a second. One, I was, I was probably 12 years old. Um, we were practicing for the all-star team a couple weeks before the championship game of the city baseball league. Okay. I'm pitching against the kid in practice i'm about to be facing in the championship of the of the city league so we're both on the all-star team yeah and i'm pitching against him and i'm like okay i gotta show this dude what's up pitch it he hits it out pitch it he hits it out pitch it he hits it out and i'm like what the freak is going on man i'm like dude what's wrong what's wrong with me (laughs) two weeks later i get to the city championship yeah and i pitch a no hitter and strike him out all three times wow but it's because that moment a couple weeks before made me realize how focused I need to be and how much harder I need to try, you know, and it like got my attention. So moments in life, it gets your attention. In college, I had one of my basketball coaches, he was, you know, probably my least favorite coach to be honest. 
he, he, he told me um, that he was going to play another kid. He was going to start another kid early in my college career over me hmm. because I had a silver spoon in my mouth. Wow. And, and, I, and I grew up with money and he didn't. And then if he didn't get to play, he was going to quit and leave and go back to whatever. Hmm. And I'm like, what the freak is wrong with this dude? Like, what you does know? that have to do with it, but anything, it, right? But that drove me because it was also, it was also the start of my insurance career. So my first year, I made 117 grand. Like he watched me, $117,361.13. Yeah. See, I got the 13 cents. He watched me. I've <laughs> said that so many times. He can't figure about the pennies. They matter. He, 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 he watched me make like four times the money he does after he was like, you know, kind of like cheap shot me a little bit, you know? And, and the fact that he would tell me that, like, dude, that, that ticked me off. So I was gonna, I was, I was gonna ask this later, but that was an action motivator. Oh, totally. And my mentor always talked about that. All these people want these wants and desires, and I, yeah. I would like to have a nice house. I'd like to have a nice car. I'd like to have a be able to go on vacations. I'd like to pay off my debt. I'd love to. I, I, yeah. I need. And he said that what really what you'll notice about successful people when he taught me this, it like changed my life. Was was <clears throat> what's your action motivator? Yeah. Because you don't do it to buy a nice house. If no, money no, was no. a motivator, we'd already be rich. Totally. If kids were a motivator, they'd be taken care of. If bills and debt were a motivator, they'd be paid off. If it was just money, I would go and, and build a hundred million dollar insurance agency. Right. And I'm, I'm one person, I've got enough confidence in myself. If I really wanted that to be a reality, I could do it in five years. But it's not my passion. I'm not excited about it. It's not really the money. I thought it was the money along Everyone, the yeah. way. You think it's the money. People start for the money. You, yeah, you start and, for the and money you, and you develop a passion. Then you get the money and you start making some free, some serious, decent money, whatever. At least what, I, what you, I considered what, what serious. What do you think a year? Yeah, you, yeah, so, yeah, you on, guys yeah. me, oh, yeah, come on, here you go. You got a Jag, you got this beautiful new home that you just bought. Congratulations, yeah. by the way. Thanks, buddy. Looks like it's, it's beautiful. And your wife, I'm a part of... Your, your wife's like this awesome decorator. I said, look, I like... Am I walking into the pottery barn? So yeah. I'm excited about actually going out to that house. You well, know, beautiful pool and slide, put I'll a just, basketball court and pickleball. It's, it's awesome. You know, he likes to Thank talk you. about my stuff, so now it's my <laughs> turn, right? So you got the, uh, my turn to talk about his stuff. I mean, <laughs> so what do you make a year? Like, what do you, what I'm do you a part in? of, here's what, what I'll tell you. What do you bring in a year, Cody? I probably don't pay How myself. I want to know what Cody Askins <laughs> brings in on a yearly basis. And his staff's like, they're all like raising their hands in the background here. Come I on. probably, just like a roundabout, like a dude, half a million. I a pay myself, I, two, three million. I still pay, well, I'm a part of several companies that will right. do about 10 million bucks, okay, total, okay. between a bunch, a bunch of them. Oh, we're getting some good stuff. But right? 10 million in a year or a month? You mean in, like a in a year. Okay. A year. Okay. I don't pay myself What's your what people profit think. On that? Not enough, whatever it is. <laughs> Here's why though. I, I, people want to hear about the money, dude, man. Dude, <laughs> I, I, spend, I spend probably close to 30 grand a month just building and promoting the brand. Like mm -hmm. along the last several years, I've, I've just started to pay, my, pay myself this year really pretty well. I put it back in. Yeah. And, and most people like, they get it and-, and That's so, but, so big. Dude, I'm thinking about the future. I'm 30 flipping years old. If I take this thing seriously, I tell my team all the time, if I take this thing, it, it ain't about the money for me because if, if I take this thing seriously, in 10 years, we will own the insurance industry. The training space, the marketing space, the help space, all of it. Like, like we will be the yeah. person that everybody thinks of when they wake up and think insurance, right? Yeah. That is my goal. And for me, it's not about paying myself an extra, mm. an extra 300 grand when, when I can put it back in the business. Well, that's what you did right, that's what you're doing right. Like most people don't realize, they see this and they see my house, and oh my God. Like I was making 30, 30 grand a month and I was driving a Nissan Maxima yeah. with the mirror tinted window still. Exactly. I mean, I, 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 I was living in a one bedroom apartment. Yeah. And I was taking that money, all of it, and reinvesting in training and reinvesting in coaching yeah. and reinvesting in product at the time and reinvest and just reinvest and building and building and building That's, and building because it, if you, and you don't do it. So, so I see so many people, they have to start having that success and all of a sudden now it's like, oh, I'm buying a brand new $100,000 yeah. Mercedes. You're like, you're making 20 grand a month. What do you yeah. need a $100,000 Mercedes for? Right. Well, it's good for my end. No one gets involved with you because of the car you drive. Unfortunately, the nicer stuff you have, it actually pushes it, people away a lot yeah, of Yeah, it's more of a repel. Who does this guy think he is? Yeah. You know, that's why I was uh, repels, about my McLaren and everything else. I'm like going, stop. It repels. You're gonna, you're gonna repel. That's not why you're trying to do it. 80 He's or 90 to percent. trying people away from, from me, right? Towards me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, so let's go, go back there. So, <clears throat> and I'm going to talk about your passion in a minute. So you're, you're, you're in college, you got um, some good, good or bad coaches. And what, what I'm hearing is a thread and, and listen to this guys because what successful people do. He learned from both. 
Yeah. Okay. I can't account how many people, woe is me, victim. I mean, even in today's society, now, everyone's a victim. Yeah. But, oh, so-and-so did this. And if I wasn't treated like that, and this person talked incorrectly. And you were, and I don't know if it came from your father. I'm very curious where it came from, or maybe because of that upbringing you had. But you were able to take that, and you were able to, some of the greatest success stories come from action motivators. You started the insurance business part-time in college. Nothing to do with insurance, but he said, okay, great. I know I have an op opportunity, a way to make money. I have my dad who can teach me how to do it. And this no. guy, whether he admits it or not, said, this guy's pissed me off. I'm going to go show who I really am. Yeah. Silver spoon my yeah. butt yeah and that action motivator drove you it wasn't about the money it wasn't about trying to break record to call out of a phone book yeah yeah, yeah. To that call, was, that's to what call, i did yeah. dude i could have yeah. that to, to cold i think you do literally door knocked. you went around neighborhoods i did and more canvas. yeah we did more of that than anything so i'm you know what i mean so i would just i would i got kicked out a lot of a lot of places a lot of apartment you buildings picked up complexes. A phone book and just started calling for phone books. well back when i didn't know that it was illegal i really did like i would go to a random random i would drive four hours to the boot hill of missouri and i'd be like well i don't have enough appointments yet or you know so i'll door knock so you did illegal stuff to help you become successful yeah there we go <laughs> or, or i'll call the phone book and <laughs> that'll I'll be like, like the one minute someone cuts out <laughs> exactly well I, and and as an intern really when i really used the phone book as an intern right and the veteran agent handed it to me and said make calls with this script worst script i've ever seen and and i had some success with it let me like, ask you a question you i did, didn't know you, i didn't but know. I know what you did the script yeah, yeah, yeah. Because here's the guy who's telling you to do what you did. Correct. Same thing with I was doing. Like, Dude, there. So you, you, he you, was successful too. He was making a couple hundred thousand right. so dollars a year. The, the, the point is, is that what's so good about you, and I'm like, again, I'm really want you need to tell me where this has come from, or it just was innately in your in, inside of you, or if you're thought, because you were able to take the good, bad, the ugly, and take it to harness it to drive you to be successful, right? So like when your coach is putting you in a situation and you failed, like was there ever a time you had, you missed the buzzer Dude. beater or you missed the winning yes. thing? You said you struck out, right? So well, I've got a story. All right. I want to hear it. Yeah. yeah. When you, what did it teach you and how did that help you become better? Cause I think a lot of so, people can learn this. I mean, guys, if you can learn what I think you're about ready to share, it'll change your life. When my mentor taught me how to look at what we consider to be bad. Yeah. You know, they always say failure is a prerequisite to success. He said, if you want to go out there and make $10,000 a month, and I, what if I told you it would take you 10,000 mistakes before you make 10,000 a month, how quick would you make them? Mm -hmm. And that was a revolutionary change. So I, I, pay attention to this, because this is going to be huge. Most people, this is funny. You know what just came to my mind? This, this video is going to, this whole thing is going to, I'm going to promote it and make it, I don't, I don't know, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to do something special with it, because I like this. Uh, <laughs> when I was Alex's age, 14, yeah. went to a tournament in Arkansas. We're down three. Coach calls up this play. They're going to pass it into me. I'm going to drive the length of the court, pass it to our best player. He's going to go score. He was like 17 probably. And we drop this elaborate play. I get the ball. I take off. I literally go like, I'm, they start double teaming me. I go like behind the backboard and throw it up over it and miss it. And buzzer goes off. Are you on purpose or like just you? Just... Yeah, totally on purpose. Oh, okay. It was weird. Uh, we, we lost. Number one, I shot a two-pointer, and we were down three. Okay. Number two, I wasn't good at shooting, so I should have passed the ball for somebody to shoot a three, right? But, dude, the, the moment just... So you didn't throw it on, on purpose over it. It just over, overwhelmed you, and you just took a horrible shot. Dude, horrible shot. <laughs> I, I thought you meant like you purposely threw the game, and you're like... <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so yeah, you're, so money over, on yeah, you're so overwhelmed. You're like, you went out... Dude, that was my first... Ball. Like, like basketball-wise, I told you, I didn't, I didn't start playing until I was like 10. That was like sure. 14. Yeah. I had not been put in that moment before, basketball-wise, okay. by a coach. And I totally flopped. Totally felt. It was right. the most, one of the most embarrassing moments ever. Yeah. And what did it teach you? It, 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 it taught me to pay attention and like, like when I play softball now, we have a softball team with the, with, with the, with the, with the, with the uh, office. Like the Olympics, the guys next to me doing. Yeah, we're right. Live, we're live from the Olympics. Dylan, Dylan after. plays. <laughs> so we have, the, we have this softball team and, and before the ball is hit, I'm like, okay, if the ball goes here, what would I do? Mm -hmm. That taught me to be prepared. When the time is, is, is there, don't get overwhelmed by the moment. Think about it before, process it, and then go freaking do it. And how does that translate into your success now, do you feel? Well, yeah, I used to just, oh, we'll just do this, 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 and this. Well, I, I, still, I, feel, I still think success people make decisions quickly, by the way. But, but well, I, I think you're Rich talks about it. Success yeah. people make decisions quickly. Average people contemplate to consider to evaluate yeah, discuss yeah. with their friends before they make a decision. Yeah. So obviously you learn that. Right. But, but, but I make sure that if I'm going to be in a moment, 
I'm, I've at least thought about the moment. Like tonight, we're doing a seven-figure mastermind at your house, mm -hmm. 40 people or whatever are coming right. over. Um, I've at least thought about the things that I would want to share and I would want to hear if I was them. Sure. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's, that's huge. So you're in a moment where now you're in a situation, I'm sure you have a good story this way, the game's on a line and yeah. you come through. Uh, I do, yeah, I was in college, um, senior year. Uh -huh. We were down um, one. We had about... Basketball, right? Basketball, yep. Or is that the water polo in, in no, Costa Rica? No, this is basketball. Oh, okay. <laughs> I had a good one. I, I played well there too, but no. Yes. This is basketball, uh, senior year. We got done doing Home. My, my, my game of cricket. We had a sip of tea, <laughs> and then I was doing some water polo. Dude, water Costa polo is a blast if you've ever played. I don't know. Uh, it's a... <laughs> swimming wears me out, and I, I want to be sitting Oh, there. there's a lot of swimming. No, we're swimming. doing this. We can't touch the You'll ball. You'll cut your feet up and everything uh, else, but no, it's no, nice. Thanks. I'm good. So... <clears throat> We're at home in, yep. in, in our, at, at Baptist Bible College, a little Bible college, you know, it wasn't, wasn't crazy impressive. And the coach is, is uh, where was that one at? I'm the starting point college? guard, where? Springfield, Missouri. Okay, so they it's where Clark, I live. They have one at Clark Summit. So I went to Cedarville oh, okay. College. Yeah, nice. Actually, so yeah. so yeah. this is, so, so, and there's like, Never graduated, I don't know, but I went. it was like 12 seconds or something, you know, and, and the coach is like, hey, we're going to get you the ball. Someone's going to set a screen at you, you at the top of the key and go score. Yep. I'm like, okay. So it was like I'm a Michael walking Jordan out. Moment. Yeah, dude, it was Michael good. So I'm walking out. I'm like, <clears throat> I'm thinking, right? I've learned. I need to process stuff before it happens. I'm like, okay. So I'm thinking, okay, what kind of moves could I do, right? Even even against Alex last night, I'm, I'm thinking about like changing it up because he's gonna get used to some of the moves I use. And I'm thinking, okay, so so what do I want this to look like? What do I what what do I hope to happen? Right. And I kind of walk through it in my head. I go out. I take the ball. I get, to the, I get to the top of key. There's probably six seconds left. Um, I do a little crossover between the legs. The screen's over here. A little, little you know, hesitation to the right. Shake cross back and, 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 and feed off the screen. And go to the rim and put up a little floater off the board to the right and score. Nice. And the buzzer goes off. We win by you one. Win. Yeah. What did that teach you? Or what did that do it taught me you? that I want a lot more moments like that. That's what it taught <laughs> yeah. me. You know, because... Yeah. There, I mean, I was, yeah, I mean, it was talked about for, for days and weeks in college and, you know, everybody recognized it and remembered and it was just fun, man. It was cool. It's funny because I, I played sports too and, and, and I had some good coaches and bad coaches. We played soccer. We had a coach from Ecuador and we were mm. national, we were champs, tri-state champions year after year. It was yeah. Christian school again, so not like this, you know, I'm no like Pele and stuff like that. But I, I fell in love with that and one of the things that I saw him do is what you kind of saw me do with my son last night, mm -hmm. right? Because it, it, was, it was, you know, my son's 14, right? And, and like I said, I have him doing personal growth and he's going, he's going, he's going. I'm like, hey, Alex, make sure you do this. Watch me do this. He goes, and he turns to me and he goes, you know what? There's nothing I can do. He goes, nothing I can do. Remember this? Everyone's all watching. I go, all right, game over. Good job, Cody, you won. He goes, what? I said, game's over. Yeah. And he goes, what do you mean? I said, you mentally said there's nothing you can do. So you might as well just quit now because you're yeah. not gonna have success. You ready to quit? He goes, no, it's just let me let me play. I said, great. So do you feel like there's something you can do? And he goes, yeah, it was probably what that that or the next time we got a rebound. Correct. He, he scored a point. Correct. And I went over and I was like, yes, and I high five, a big smile <laughs> on his face and everything else. Boom, uh, and you finished yeah, yeah. off and obviously won. You he won a hundred bucks. But then like I purposely went inside when he played Brad because Brad said if he beats me, I'll give him a hundred bucks. And of course he won a hundred bucks and saw Brad play basketball. But anyway. <laughs> Um, that was like a lay down. I should have told him that 500 bucks. But anyway, uh, but he said I'm big. I'll get him. But my son's yeah. good at basketball. He um, is good, man. For 14, he's better funny, than I was. And it was funny because they came in. They said, well, as soon as you left, your son just started lighting up. I go, yeah, that was on purpose. Yeah. Because like I know with that mentorship and, and, and you know, even as a leader, I do it with my agents because it's like, oh, I, I want to be able to function with my mentor standing down my neck and everything else. Yeah. Like, yeah. So like here's the moment. Mentally, you have to be prepared to do it. And then – exit stage yeah. right and then let them go perform yeah. let them fall let them go yeah. let them grow and then come back again so i mean it, it, it's it's huge because like you look back at it now and you whether they knew what they were doing or not it seems like we both had that 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 influence oh, sure. in our life as being from coaches for sure Th so, there's a yeah i mean there, there's a lot of you know i mean there's a lot of moments in my life i remember like i was 16 i was supposed to go work at apple market at, at, at four o'clock and it was like three o'clock and i i went to my dad at like three thirty. And I was like, hey, I'm, I'm throwing up. I don't feel like going to work, you know. I'm in How old were you? 16, 16. Apple Market? First job. Okay. It's a grocery I was, store. I was going to ask you, what's your first job? Okay. First Stacking job, apples. grocery store. Stacking apples. No, it was, uh, it was actually uh, mopping and, and restocking the shelves and getting the carts out of the parking lot, you know. 
And then occasionally when they need an extra someone to check, check and, and, and bag and all that, I would do that too. Huh. And, and you couldn't mop till after 10 o'clock when you closed, you know, all that. So four to 10 part-time shift. What were you making an hour? I was making 750. Oh geez, that was double. My first job I was cleaning, I was cleaning uh, fish tanks at Martin's Aquarium. Making it was, dude, it was like- 3.35 an hour. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but I'm old. Well, what, yeah, that's true, you are. <laughs> Whatever minimum wage was that back was it, then, three thirty-five an hour. Jeez. I think mine was probably seven bucks. So it was your seven first job. Yeah, so something you like that. You feel like I'm, I don't want to go to work. I'm tired. All my stomach hurts, and what happened? I, I was throwing up. Oh. And I go to my dad, and I'm like, "Hey, I, I, I don't want to go. I don't want to go to work. You know, I'm, I'm not feeling it today." Mm -hmm. And he said something that makes me show up today, like because most people they make excuses, they they don't show up. I've got friends that like. They say they're going to do something, mm -hmm. and then they don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Drives me nuts. And, and the excuses are lame. It's not like throwing no, up. Throwing dude, up's a good excuse. Like I'm puking. So I don't. It, feel it was like sort it of a good. excuse. It could be considered. For could most be. People. Could be. Okay. So what it's happened? not to me anymore because it's like, right. dude, I, I normally feel better like a few minutes later because I just got it out of my system. Right. But whatever. What'd your dad say to you? He said, "You do whatever you want to do, but you know what I would do." Wow. Wow. Yeah, I still, I still remember that. I was standing, we were standing outside. Your dad's a smart guy, man. And he, he just put it back on me, you know? He didn't tell me what to do. You do what you want to do, yeah. but you know what I would do. Yeah. Wow. I'd, never miss him. I'd never seen him miss a day of work in That's his good. entire life. That's and good. I went to work. Worked the whole shift. It was perfectly fine. Guess what? You felt better. Felt better. And that was a pivotal moment in my life where I could have chose... I could have chose to be a flipping loser, yeah. but I look back and it's a good story to tell because it was great advice and I actually showed up. Most people in the industry fell. They don't show up. They just don't show up. Mm -hmm. You know, like it literally, like in college, I had to show up to class to pass the class. It wasn't hard. It wasn't rocket science. If I showed up, I, I won. In, in, in insurance, you just gotta show up. You know, you win. most people never show up, so they don't win. 98% of success, when they do that, slow, that, that thing online is just showing up. Yeah. But, but it's reality. Dude, it's so simple. It's like, okay, I just got to show up. I, like, like for me, I got to where about every 25 door knocks that I would make, mm -hmm. I would make a sale. So guess what I got to do? So I went out to try to do 50 door knocks a day mm -hmm. and make two sales a day. Like it, it was easy. I, you know what I mean? But I, but I had to show up and do it. Most people don't want to do it. Like if you say, yeah. they'll say, I want to be successful no matter what, Nate. And you're like, go oh, do yeah. this. Well, except for that. I really want to be successful, but not if I have to do that, you know? Yeah, I'll do it as long as I don't have to do that. Like, I mean, in the mortgage yeah. protection, the same thing. Like you set up the number of dials, right? Yeah. If you do 250 dials, you'll get a hold of X amount of people, sell many things, and you start counting it and you realize you're making $7 every dial you make. Exactly. But people don't see that. Mm -mm. They see the $17 they made with no answer. Yeah. And the person that didn't show up and the reschedule. So yeah. you went from uh, Well, and the, the one problem that I have, I have a flaw. Okay. Whoa, wait, Hi, hold on a minute. We have all oh, cameras geez. on. We wait. I Nobody didn't mean like that. I have that. many flaws. He has no. a flaw. I don't Jeez. know where it's at. This is gonna be good here. Let's get, make sure we have this. But battery's going well. We get, we're good. Right. One. Cody Askins flaw. Here we go. <clears throat> what do they do that like in the movie? Yeah, <laughs> action. <laughs> action. Massive, one massive flaw. Okay. When I train and educate on YouTube and train insurance agents and all that stuff, I train so simple Mm -hmm. that it makes it seem easy and attainable mm -hmm. for anyone. Hmm. But I may, but, but wow. it wasn't as easy for me as it sounds like it was. And people need to realize that just because I make it seem easy when I do some training, it doesn't mean that in the real world, it's actually going to be that easy. And that's one thing that I haven't done well and that I've probably done the insurance industry a disservice because I've made it, made it seem like everything is easy. Like I got a comment on YouTube earlier, mm -hmm. um, when I, cause it was me cold calling. <laughs> You've been talking for 15 look, minutes and you got- two six, hours ago, 6, Jordan, Jordan C commented on my YouTube, you make it look so easy. It's a cold calling video. Yeah. It, it, it wasn't always that easy. No. You know, like for you, I've seen you go out, dude, the dude could write $100,000 a month of life insurance, part-time and you're one of the few that I know that could actually pull it off and it looks so easy but it wasn't always that easy it takes yeah. time to get freaking great at something 
Well, it, it, it's it's simple, but it's not easy. We yeah. live here in Texas. Would you say it's slightly hot? Yeah, dude, it was like 100 when like I was playing fry, basketball. Fry, I was like covered in sweat, head, dude. Right? I mean, so if I said, hey, Cody, go outside in my backyard yeah. and dig 10 holes so we can plant some trees. That's simple. Oh, dude. I don't have to like, you don't take a class. I still think that's easy too, but yeah, yeah, But yeah. no, but yeah. it's not easy. Yeah. It's not easy. Yeah. Not for everybody. Yeah. Right? But if I say, hey, go out and dig 100 holes. Yeah. It's a little bit harder now, isn't it? Yeah. And then people will go out and go, hey, I can do 10. And then they get the 12 and they come inside and it's oh, hot. They, they, I'll, I'll do it. I'll finish it tomorrow. I, I'm a sunburn. I'll finish it tomorrow. I'm yeah. dehydrated. You don't understand. I, the, the sun makes me um, uh, it, mental. Yeah. Well, it's also a mindset thing too, because you said you were about to say that's simple, but not easy. And I said, I know it's still easy, it's still right? Easy. If it, I look at obstacles. So here's another story. My, tr I, I started training and working out with a trainer. So I have two that we trade different days, but whatever. In January. Which is obvious, Hercules. Shut up. Dude, I'm still day. tiny, bro. I mean, I'm, I'm in good shape. Yeah, you're not big, man. Come on, just sit, look. I'm not I, big. I can wash, no, stop, I can wash stop. my clothes on his abs, right? <laughs> I'm not big. I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm in ripped. good shape. How about that? Is ripped. it? Whatever. I don't know. I don't work That's out, good. so they call it like swole. Like he's ripped. Yeah. Right? This is like going to turn into a workout video. Like you can search. Yeah, we need to do Cody Haskins workout video. 8%, 8% fitness. Uh, yeah, we need to do it for sure, for sure. But when I went to my, I had my first workout. Right. Uh, well, one of my first ones was was later when 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 COVID started happening, mm -hmm. and I, I had him come to my house. Yeah, I remember? Yeah, he had, had, in your garage and stuff. Yeah, I hadn't I actually. I don't. I don't even know. I don't think I started in January. I think it was later. So I hadn't worked out with him very many times. My first workout at my house destroyed me. I couldn't finish some of the exercise. I was tired your day from watching you work out. I actually woke up sore this morning. I told you, I was like, oh, I'm a little bit. go ahead, so you destroyed you. And, and it, it irritated me. Oh. And, and, and I said, from now on, mentally, I said, get the freak up. I said, from now on, when something is difficult, I want you to say out loud, this is too easy. It's like when you said that was supposedly hard, that, that was my, that's my thing now, like it's easy. And my trainer hates it because they'll put me through like the most brutal workout they've ever put together. And I'll be like, dude, too easy man and and they cannot break me now like i will just go harder and harder and harder wow. but it was a mint it was a mindset shift because i wasn't that way for towards working out i didn't use, i didn't like to work out yeah first eight percent nation 2018 i wore a t-shirt 2018 percent nation yesterday last night that conference i didn't work out every day huh i felt like the biggest hypocrite in the world after that conference i said dude you are telling people energy is everything mm -hmm. you are telling people that you need to you know be be have a, ha, be mentally tough and all this other stuff, but you're not working out. You're a hypocrite. I'm talking to myself. Mm -hmm. A week after the conference, I started working out in November of 2018. I was on vacation actually. November, November of 2018, something clicked and I've worked out literally almost every day since. Wow. Too easy, huh? It did. It's too he, easy. I bet, I bet he hates that. Oh, they do. They'll you be like balls and ropes and sleds, and you're like, "Oh, this is too easy." Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so now they call me too easy, Cody. Yeah. <laughs> so take take us from real quick, because um, this is what I think everyone wants to know, and if the people are still watching. Take us from where. And if, and if you're not still watching, that's the reason you're gonna freaking fail anyway, because you can't finish a video. <laughs> I know. If you can't finish a video, you'll never finish a day of Here, success. Here's a guy who hasn't hit the age of thirty, who dwarfs most entrepreneurs in the entire country in terms of success and, and credibility and integrity and likability. I mean, there's very, there's very few people I see that, that hold on, that, that don't like you, right? You, you have, you have, you're like the, the guy, the kid, all American boy, kid next door. You have a, a love for, you know, your family, God, this, you're like the whole package, right? I, I, I want to be liked. I don't like, I don't like people. I don't like having haters. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? We're, as we grow, we're starting to get them a little bit and it's, and it's, and it sucks. And, but, but also the way you talk about me now, five years ago, I couldn't talk about myself that way. Right. You know what I mean? And, but I always wanted someone talk about me that way, you know, or some type yeah. of success or some type of money or a company or people. Dude, literally, no, nobody will believe this. I think it was, uh, was it 2016 or 2017? Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe part of 2017, I hired my first employee ever. Oh, three years ago. You know what I mean? Like anybody can was have. That's scary. That's scary. Yeah. Oh, dude, it, it was like <laughs> the biggest. It was like the biggest decision of my life. And now now you're got, hiring like thirty a week. Yeah, you know, we got like seventy. You, have you like know, seventy employees. Yeah. So here you are. You're this embodiment, right? And, and I mean, and what you've 
and I think it's, tell me if you agree with this. Like, you know, when you read the book, Thinker Rich talks about, like, you know, once you start getting these principles, you start, money eludes you and eludes you and eludes you. You go after it. And all of a sudden, yeah. then, you go, you start getting these principles that he talked about, desire, right? And faith, right? And auto yes. suggestion yes. and the, the discipline and all the, you know, uh, uh, thoughts or things. And all of a sudden, that starts yeah. becoming too easy. And you're yeah. almost like, where was this the whole time? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, you go out and you run a, a marathon, half marathon. Yeah. Right. And people are telling you it's impossible. There's no way to run a half marathon in under two minutes or nine minutes a mile. It's not going to happen. Under yeah. two hours. Yeah. Not going to happen. First marathon trains for a week. And I had no doubt, you know, it was the hillbilly uh, marathon. Hillbilly run. Got, <laughs> the in hillbilly Ozark, run. Missouri. However, who cares? It doesn't matter. You're going up and down the hills on the hillbilly run. And you're in a competition against the other people. You're in a competition against yourself and you finished under two hours. Yeah. Averaged under, I think was it right at or under nine minutes a mile. Correct. And everyone told everyone you talked to said it can't be done. For your first one, that's what they said. Yeah. No. And you yeah. did it. But that's now your life. Well, but what's funny is though, one week before that, I ran seven miles. I averaged ten minutes a mile for seven, and I was dying. I'm like, I can't even finish them, finish it. And then a week later, I'm running double in less the time. Wow. But it, it was it was something in me. So I wrote something down. You talk about goals and write stuff down. Oh, a lot. absolutely. And people got to do this. I wrote down the night before. Mm-hmm. I think I saw a picture of it, by the way. I just completed my first ever half marathon in under two hours on this date and signed it. That's it. That wasn't fake. I willed it into existence. Now, the difference is I don't just say stuff. I went out and did whatever the freak it took to finish it. I was dying. I, I, I said, I said, what type of story will it be? Because I got up to where I was averaging 905, 910 yeah, yeah. per mile. Turn, you were saying that, yeah. About halfway. And I'm like, holy crap, I'm, I'm going the wrong direction. You know? Mm-hmm. I said, what type of story will it be that I can look back on? If in this moment I hyper focus and do the things I want to do, what type of story will this be? So I'm going to get up and tell part of that story tomorrow. It's That's- a success law, Cody. And most people ignore it. If you read, then read Think and Grow Rich. <laughs> He lays it out there, Napoleon Hill, right? Yeah. He, he, he lays it out there and says, your mind, is a, it's a computer, it's programmable. And the most programmable your subconscious mind is, is in the morning yeah. and before you go to bed. And he said, write them out. And I, write, I was taught to write them on blue cards because it's friendly to the subconscious mind. Mm-hmm. The house we're sitting in, I showed you a picture at last night. Yeah, yeah, I, you I'll did. have to show this picture up there. I, I'm, I'm starting the insurance industry. I'm completely broke because I had left my other career. I went through my savings. I'm driving around to people's homes like I thought I never would. I had to replace $20,000 a month income from my previous lifestyle that I had no money coming in. And I drive by a house. I take a picture and I send it to my wife. And I saw the text. I said, we're going to buy a house like this one day and put heart and I'm less than a month in. And I showed you the picture. Yeah. How like 90% almost the exact and I forgot about the whole conversation. I forgot about that picture. I found it later. Oh. So you did what most people don't do because they think it's cheesy. They think it's hypey. They go, <clears throat> oh, yeah. Andrew Carnegie hired Napoleon Hill, studied people for 20 years, the most successful people on the planet. And he said, hey, what do they do? They auto-suggestion and they program their subconscious mind. He wrote, he, he needed a title by the next morning and he did the same thing you do. He sat down he said, I commission you, my subconscious mind, to come up with a title that will make millions of dollars and help millions of people. You, Napoleon's helped lost talks. He had, and he wrote it on a card, signed it, woke up next morning. He goes, I got it. I got it. Think and grow rich. Mm. And here you are before. Like, yeah. it's so powerful. It, it, it's like, there's so many hacks. I guess you guys call them hacks. I hang around all the yeah. millennials, right? It's, well, it's tough hacks. to have conversations because yeah. where, where's your phone? We're, we're, we're all talking. I'm like, I'm not used to this. You know, Brad, you, you're all like, <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. There's like, I'm like 20 people. I'm like, my phone's upstairs, guys. My phone's upstairs. You're like, oh no, yeah. Oh, so did you see this? I'm like, that's crazy. <laughs> but there's, there's hacks to success that most yes. people think are BS or just, you know, pie in the sky, fairy dust. Yep. And you did it. You did the hack. I mean, it's no shock. Like that doesn't well, shock I'm me still when you did it. It doesn't shock me. I'm still doing it. It doesn't shock me. I have it. I'm still doing it. I, 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 I've, I've got a picture of the jet that I will own one day that I don't have right now. You know, right. but like, and, and, I, and the same thing with my wife. I was always telling her like, these are the things that we will have. And, not, it has to piss people off because they, they think it's a joke. It they has do, to piss but it off like going, oh, because because you do a dream board doesn't mean you're going to have it without an action motivator and without yeah, a real true belief, faith. Yes. To activate. Yes. You know the Bible says faith, the size of mustard seed, will move mountains. Well, I never seen one move a mountain, but yeah. in my viewpoint, the NIV version, the Nate International version, right? <laughs> faith, the size of a mustard seed, can move mountains. It means. If you have a little bit of faith, you can yeah. have success. So what's that mean? That means zero 
doubt. Yeah. You can't have faith and doubt at the same time. Totally. Like you can't be kind of pregnant, right? Yeah. <laughs> you can't be yeah. like, Lauren, you know, the tests are in and you're, you're kind of pregnant. Yeah. Like you're either pregnant or you're not. Right. Right. You, you either have faith or you have doubt. And so what I think the Bible is talking about, faith the size of mustard, you can move mountains. It means that if you have zero doubt, there's no obstacle that you can take out yep. from, from up to you. Yep. So yep. let's, let's bring it home here with, with you, your, your, you know, stack, stocking groceries, clean mopping floors real yeah. quick. What was your next job? Like what led you into like, I know you got into college, but what led you into what you're doing now? Yeah. Cause you had, had success, obviously created a story, which you have to have story, you have to have documentation. I'm, What'd you do in between that? I've never told this. I actually started a uh, cleaning company Oh wow! called slam dunk cleaning. Slam dunk cleaning. Okay. Where I was cleaning uh, with my buddy Ty. I want to start a mowing company and it would be like the slogan would be, we, we want to get to mow you. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, go ahead. So you had to say it was uh, oh my gosh. Well, uh, it was Slam it was cleaning. we were cleaning offices, you know, oh, cool. and like commercial spaces and stuff. And but but the thing is, I was always like I sold on I sold, I think when I was fifteen or sixteen, I sold like maybe seventeen. I don't remember, but I sold like ten thousand dollars worth of stuff on eBay in one summer. Wow! You know? Like I was always I was just an entrepreneur. Like I wanted to sell Did you, like, stuff. Sell all your parents' stuff. And they didn't pretty know much. That pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever was in the shed that we didn't use, you know, I just sold everything. Wow. And, and I didn't know that I would be as much of a natural salesperson as I am. Mm -hmm. But what's funny is people will relate to this. In 2017, I vividly remember when we were starting a call center and everything else, I said, if I can just make $5,000 a week, all my problems will go away. I will be super happy. Maybe I'll buy my wife whatever I want. If I can just make $5,000 a week. Uh -huh. that, was, that came out of my mouth. And now I look back, I'm like, what the world? freak is wrong with me you know but that but, was, but that's not like you know what i mean but uh, it's just for, for me thing. mine was ten thousand a month i go man yeah if i can make it was like that was a number i, I already made that if so. i can oh, i know you're blowing, blowing past me i was broke at your you know i was just coming into into making money here yeah but i was like if i can make ten thousand a month man i'm gonna have a, a freaking butler and i have a circle driveway <laughs> with a mansion and pillars and i'm gonna have Oh yeah, I'm coming around from like. How well, you got the circle driveway and the well, yeah, pillars. That, that, that and was not. That was like more than ten grand. The cleaning team's coming over grand, later before the ten event. Grand a day would get you that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay, so so you started that. What happened? Did it, did it have success? Did it fail? Or or the cleaning slam dunk cleaning? Yeah, it, it did okay. Um, I eventually became a an intern at at the at the insurance office and then became an okay. agent. What's your dad? Uh, yeah, so so he 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 uh, the general manager over like seven states and he had a mutual mall office in Springfield. So I was an intern there. And selling final expense or? And then was just selling life insurance in general. Yeah, okay. a lot of final expense, but, but mostly most, a lot of small whole life. We didn't, you know. So you're $117,361 and 13 cents. Yes. I got it now. Got it. Uh, that on final expense or what was that mostly? It was mostly final expense. Most, mo mostly small whole life burial insurance. Okay. Yeah. Did you finish college? I did. Okay. Yeah. What'd you get a degree in? Business management nice. and, a, and a minor in biblical studies. Yeah. See, there you go. So, got a college degree can actually still yeah. help you. I, I, I made a hundred grand before I got my degree, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so when did you start your? I, I I love your beginning of your YouTube channel. Maybe maybe uh, Dylan um, will play it on this video and like do a little pause here and show your first one with your creaky chair. And Hi, my name is Cody Askins, and welcome to the Cody Askins YouTube channel. Please subscribe below. Today we're gonna to go over the six things that every oh what, my god what inspired dude. you to do that? Like what 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 triggered that's, you to do all this stuff? I think this is what people want to know. This question the, and the next question. This that's the question. Know. Yes, that's that's one of the questions, by the way. Yep. Because I was selling, making I made nine grand my first month. I had a manager call, and and well, actually before that, most people don't know this. In a recruiting meeting, what also was an action motivator. Okay. Recruiting meeting, 10 people in the room, manager says, okay, 10 of you stand up, look around, we're looking around, you know, he says, okay, now nine of you sit down. He says, maybe one of you will make it. Wow. And huh. I'm like, this dude doesn't know me very well. I'm like, if there's going to be a one, I, I'm going to be the one. Action motivator. Yeah, totally. Um, and then later, did, was doing well, cold calling, cold door knocking, no, no leads, just freaking straight cold. Like, you don't know me, welcome to the family. And I had a manager call me from like four hours away and said, hey, can you come? I got two new guys that are struggling. They ain't made money in months. Mm -hmm. Can you come help them make some sales? Can you come door knock with them? Cause they're like, he's like, cause they're trying to door knock like you are, but they ain't doing what you're doing. Right. You know? I said, sure. 
And so I went up and we made five cells in one afternoon from cold door knocking. They thought it was the greatest thing in the world. I, I let them keep the business, you know, and, and, and went home. Wow, that's, 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 that's Cody right there. <laughs> and the whole way back, I'm like, I just found my calling. Yeah. That was it. I was like, I got more gratification and satisfaction helping them make money and, and, and a light bulb click for them than I did when I made a sale. And I said, if I ever get a chance to spend the rest of my life helping other people make money, I'll do it. That's and awesome. I said, eventually, like I, I, used, I used to grow up. Most people don't know this either. My, my grandfather who passed away last year was a Baptist pastor hmm. for 40 something years. Mm -hmm. And I used to watch him speak at camp meetings and church, other stuff. And I, sure. used, I used to say, I want to be a public speaker when I grow up. Huh. And guess what? We're speaking at a conference tomorrow together, yeah. you know? Yep. And, and I used to listen to Zig Ziglar and Brian Tracy and be like, I want to be the Brian Tracy and the Zig Ziglar of insurance. And you're doing it. And I believe and you're doing one it. day we will be. Oh, yeah, you're doing it. No, you're doing it, man. You're doing I really consulting do. So that, wow. So that you had that feeling of watching you have a positive impact on someone else. And it, it was worth it, any, any it, more, mo yes. worth more money than yes. you could even. And, and so I started the YouTube channel because someone said, hey, dude, why don't you like try to help some other agents? You know, I'm like, how okay, so I start looking first, into how that. How long was the first video that we just watched? How long was that? Uh, or like, the first beginning of the first video I'm gonna make Dylan show. Oh, dude, uh, yeah, I mean, the how beginning long, was, was it six, six years? Uh, December 29th of 2015. Wow, five years almost ago. Almost five years, not even five years yet. How crazy yeah, is that? Yeah, almost five years ago. And the video is horrible. Like, if you go to my YouTube it channel. It wasn't that bad. It's just, it's just nice. <laughs> Let's keep it real. It sucks. I'm Cody Askins, and I'm going to show you the six things that you need to have success. And it's like the, the chair. Please that subscribe for. below. Yeah, yeah, it's squeaky. welcome to it's the like a squeaky yeah. chair. I'm like, get some WD-40. But I didn't have Dylan back then. It wasn't though, that you know? bad. But it was like, everyone, welcome to the Cody Askins YouTube channel. I'm here's like, what that taught me: like, you don't have like everyone wants to have because of the way society is. It's like everyone wants to have everything done before you actually do, and you're like, going oh, screw it. I'm in an office with horrible lighting. That's a success hack. I sat, I sat in You a can't theater. know everything to, before no. you do everything. And you start getting traction. So you, yeah. you launch it there. How long did it take for someone to actually watch a video? Um, it took a couple months. So like, you're just do so like you were just doing videos and put them on YouTube and no one would view them. I had, wow. I had like 600 subscribers, like in like 12 to 18 months. Yeah, but like, so they, like you nobody. Were doing, so you're literally doing videos, putting them on YouTube and no one would watch them. Correct. But like, you kept doing them. I would share them on like Facebook, so I would get like three views, wow. you know? And, and But you kept doing them. Dude, for two years. <laughs> two years? It took me two years to get to a thousand subscribers. And now you're at what, almost over 20? Right? Yeah. At the time of this video? And 20, yeah, almost 21,000. 2020 in uh, August 2020, you're at 20,000? Yeah, 20,700 as of this morning, but who's counting, right? Who's, who's paying attention? I, I think you're counting. Yeah, I think, I think, I think so. He's counting. I think he's counting. He's counting. Dude, I like it. Uh, and that was... That's called exponential growth, by the way. Most people don't teach that in wealth. Yeah. People look at, you know, wealth doesn't grow like a carrot. You know, wealth doesn't yeah. grow where it's like you see this. Wealth goes like this. And usually, right? And, the thing and is, then all of a sudden it starts to yeah. explode. And it took you two years to get a thousand. Correct. And how, how, logically, how does it make sense to go two years to a thousand and then three years, a thousand to 20,000? That, that math's not congruent because most people think that's what it we're taught time. in school. Yeah. 14,000 hours to go to school. It's you're, like math. One plus one plus one. You're going to suck at it. Nobody's going to know you and you're not going to know what you're doing. And that was true for me for everything. And you well, know. This is you. What's one plus one? Two. Two, right? And success, one plus one is 11. Mm. When yeah. it starts kicking in. But most people aren't, don't want to be able to, like you did. One plus one plus one plus one plus one. Yeah, as yeah, soon yeah, as dude. you kick in, then it's one plus one is 11. Yeah. Well, well now we're, <laughs> we're adding about 1,500 to 2,000 subscribers a month now. So you're doing it a month now what it took you two years to do. Correct. Yeah, more. Wow. But I, I did that because I thought I could maybe help somebody. I'm like, dude, if I help one person, that's cool. You know, I was doing a little mentor, local mentorship thing, and I was like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to try this, you know. And I didn't know what it would become. And, and you look back now, it's like, what if I wouldn't have done it? What if I wouldn't have started, you know? I wouldn't be sitting here. I wouldn't know who Nate Offer was, you know. Uh, People wouldn't be watching anything. Right. right. I would. I don't know what. I'd, I'd probably be still wishing I was making five grand a week. I don't know. You know. I know. Is that scary? Like you think of the the, the, the little decisions Dude, that, we make in our life. Yeah. Where would we be at? But most people, most people know what they need to do. By the way, 
Mm -hmm. Typically, we know. We look for other people to tell us. We look for like, you know, like these amazing things, like to spotlights to shine on like it. A sign from God. Come yeah. Heavens. Do this. Cody, start a YouTube channel, 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 channel. Like they think this is like going to come up. <laughs> deep, deep down, we know what to do. All right. Yeah. But we don't always do it. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> did you, uh, so did you start like, I'm not in, I, you know, you make fun of me because I'm on Instagram and I don't really it doesn't have even stuff have an on, Instagram on a YouTube channel and everything else. But, uh, but you get, you get, you could buy Instagram probably. So what's it matter? <laughs> no, I you're funny. So like, did you start like getting good reception or you start getting like negative comments or mostly positive comments or like, how did that go and how did that <laughs> just go back and look at some of the comments on my early videos? It was a mix. Some are like really dumb. Like I don't, I, I think, some are really dumb. You yeah. know, I've always said that, that you can't but, fix stupid. Yeah. But then I start realizing when you get on social media, like some people just say like the, I don't know if they just probably dude they, we get so many negative comments too that like literally what's the um point? i don't want to get on such a but what's the point of that i don't understand that like you know i, I don't yeah like this one bro, bro you realize your script you're you're you, you sound scripted legit why would anyone even talk to you this was 14 hours ago does a youtube comment like dude we get two dozen of those a day now but it doesn't even phase me it, because it's like you at first it totally phased me totally phased me because that's what i thought that's, that's oh, maybe they're right. Yeah. Maybe I yeah. shouldn't do a video anymore. Yeah. And it affected me early on. But I don't know why it affected you. It didn't affect you, and I'm, tell me if I'm wrong. Okay. It didn't affect you because this person said something negative. It, it made you second guess yourself, am I really helping? Yeah, yeah. Or am I hurting? Am I really helping? Am I hurting? And, that, and that's what people don't see. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. you know, your whole goal is to help people out. And if you feel like, you know, cause I've second guessed myself on a lot of stuff too. Yes. Like you do this conference call, everyone rants and or raves. Oh my God, it was awesome. It's incredible. And one person goes, well, dun, 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 dun. you're like, oh, yeah. maybe, maybe I like, Who is cares? that really going to help people? Is that really going to work? And what I've learned is it's impossible to please everyone. You do what you think is best and who freaking cares? And if you try to please Dude. everybody, you please no one at all. Yeah. But, but I also, exactly. But I also get, but I also get messages and videos and testimonials and comments every single day now. Dude, literally, no joke, one weekend, I got one from Australia, Puerto Rico, Mexico, wow. China, Canada, and London. All in one weekend. And some of the comments were, I just found your content. I thought about quitting. This is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Wow. And I'm not gonna quit now. Awesome. I'm like, dude, that's why I'm doing it. Not, that's not because wanna, that's why I want to partner with you, buddy. Dude. This is why this is why I'm, I have you in my house. When I yeah. when I when I when I meet people like you, and I'm gonna ask you two final questions, which are the, the really good ones here coming up. But uh, when I meet people like you, it's like going when I can find cause that. That's what drives me. I, I had someone reach into my life and believe in me more than I ever believed in myself. Yeah. Or I wouldn't be sitting or have the life I have today. And when someone was willing to do that for me, that's what drives me for you know, sure. Like with my, with my team and just because you're like nice stuff. It's like I, everyone, like I judge not lest you be judged. You, you know, it's like, I, yeah. I don't get it. Like you like to go on vacations. You like to have a nice car. You like blue. I like black. You like seafood. I like Mexican. Like who cares? Yeah. I don't ever whatever happened. Like you live in America, you have your own opinions and you have a right. Yeah. You want to stand great. You want to kneel, kneel. Like, I, I don't understand. Like, right. You want to, yeah. isn't that America? Believe in, sure. you get to believe in what you want. Freedom of speech. You get to do what you want, when you want, who you want. That's, that's, that's what we build up on. Right. And what I want is I want to surround myself around people who have other people's best interests in mind. What I want is the, the fulfillment yeah. that you said you got is a fulfillment when I see, it's like, it's like when you're a parent, if you ever if you have children and I know you don't have children yet, right? right? And whether you have them, uh, here shortly or, or, or wait a while, whatever the case may be. The moment you watch your child open a Christmas present, mm -hmm. your life changes. You know, mm -hmm. the moment you watch, uh, and, and, and a lot of you guys knew moms, dads, you know what I'm talking about. Like when your kid rides his bike for the first time, or, you know, even yeah. the fulfillment you got of watching, helping coach Alex with some basketball. Moves, totally. Right? Dude, that was so much fun. And, yeah. and that's what I love about you. That's why I want you involved in my life. Cause I, I know that your heart is where it needs to be. And your main focus isn't about the money, right? Um, it, it, it's about, cause you could pay yourself way more. Um, it's about how many agents you have and you're not perfect. I'm not perfect. No, we're no. not going to be perfect. Right. But think about, so what drive, what drives you now? Like here you are right now in everyone's eyes, your success, you know, you're very getting well known in the industry. What, what really continues? Which is to weird drive? that that supposedly happens so quickly too, by the way. Five you know years, what I mean? It's not weird. 
It's not weird. Yeah, but it's just it's, it's not uh, it's normal. Cold. But with what you just explained, it explains why you had a success. You had a good heart, you had a good motive. Yeah. You did it for the right reasons. And and everyone else's you helping others was it was your forefront. Now, how do how do you how do you not have success doing that if you are really walking the talk? And that's the difference. You know, yeah. I met one guy one time, he's like, when you can learn to fake sincerity, that's when you may live. <laughs> Talk about an oxymoron, right? right? And that's why I wanted to get around you. You know, I yeah. want, I, I, you know, I didn't go, oh my gosh, here's Cody Askins. You know, he can teach me so much about the insurance business, right? I just said, okay, this guy is doing something good. He's helping people, right? He, he looks like the part. He talks the part. I want to meet him personally to find out who he really is. Yeah. Is he really true? Is he really the guy that he says and pretends to be? Because I've been around a lot of people like that. And I spent money to figure that out. I sat in the front row of your 8% Nation Conference when yeah, Michael Irvin was talking and I met Ramiz and I met Coach Burt, who's now in my life. And I sat there, I paid a ticket for me and my wife, VIP, premier, front row, because I wanted to go to the dinner yeah. or, or the meet and greet the prior night so I could shake your hand, look you in the eye, get to know you. And my goal is to formulate a relationship. It was on one of my goal cards. And I'll yeah, tell you right now, you are more than the man I thought you would be. Like you, you are so impressive compared to what, I mean, I had this level because we're all humans and I didn't hold you up here. I was like, okay, here, here, here's my level. He should be here. I mean, you've super succeeded Thanks, all, all of uh, my expectations of you. Appreciate it. I mean, it's been awesome. And I developed an incredible friendship with you. Um, sure. Never would I imagine I'd be friends with someone that's way better looking than me. You know, it's tough because I mean, I was usually, <laughs> but what keep, what keeps you going now? Right. And what, what do yeah. you see in the future? Um, what's your, where are you going to move to more forward to? Like what, what's inspiring what, what, you now? What keeps me going is, is waking up and, and, and doing something that challenges me, you know, like the half marathon, like, you know, the mastermind randomly, like working 8%, out, working out. Yeah, whatever. Like I'm going to do a try. I'm going to do an Ironman in, in November. You, you, you challenge know? me, man. Dude, like people need a challenge. Like when you get complacent, bored, lazy, whatever you want to call it. It's because you're not being challenged in your life. Mm -hmm. And I come home all the time. It's, this is just, I, I think people are just like this. People with high drive and that want to be successful mm -hmm. have this in them. I'll come home and, and you don't, I feel like I've never, I haven't actually accomplished anything yet. And my wife will be like, dude, won't you like stop and look around? Like, won't you like chill out for a second? You know, I get that all the time. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, but, but it's like deep down, you're not where you want to be. So you don't think you've done anything. Or because we're not doing it for, I, I didn't, I never did it for a nice house. I yeah, never did it. That's for, exactly right. Like, did you run the marathon because you wanted to have the hillbilly uh, gold medal no. for your age group? Like, are, like, do you have it? You have it? Like, you're gonna save it in a chest and, and hang it on the wall? Like, that's not why you did it. So, like, no. most people don't realize that stuff is nothing more to the type A person. The stuff is nothing more than that trophy and that medal. Correct. And like, you don't sit there. I, like, I don't, it, I don't go out it. and hug my car. I barely drive my car. That's it. Right. I don't go out and hug it. You know, I don't like to talk about it. I don't have it all over my social media. That's it. You know, it, it, it's like that trophy. It, it's, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's literally a step along the way through your life that you can look back and say, I made a step. Well, I'll tell you I'm not only up the ladder, right. but I, but I made a step. And I'm, I'm going to come back to it because I want you to answer this question here, but you're doing the right things because most people realize that, that and, and, and it was Ed Milet who talked about, right? You know, self confidence right comes yeah. from one's self that's right and when you keep promises to yourself over and over and over again you're developing it was huge when i heard it yes. about you're building your confidence that's and exactly when you right don't you're destroying it and there's no in between yes and when he said that speech i was like man i'm getting goosebumps Dude. I'm like, God. I'm like man, you have that is that is the key to become because no i was not confident i was very insecure i wasn't confident it sounds like you were a lot more confident sooner than i was I heard that, man. It's like, I teach that to people all day long. It's self confidence It comes from oneself. So the more, and just try it, like silly stuff. I had a guy who couldn't, he couldn't, I never finished a book. I never did this. I go, listen, walk around the block every day for one month. He goes, what? I said, walk around the block every day for one month. This is after I heard it from Ed Milet. He goes, really? I said, yeah, rain, sleet, snow, I don't care. Tired, just do it every day. Win, win. I don't care, every day. After 30 days, he went, man, I have never in my entire life set out to do something and actually accomplished it. 23 year old kid wow. wrote, made $187,000 in 12 months in the insurance industry in my group. 
And it's as dumb as he got hooked to go on. You know what? If I can accomplish it, I set it up. I keep a promise to myself. Yeah. And then the world becomes your oyster. And that's what's happening right now I see in your life. Because you're going to go, hey, boom, boom, Iron Man. Man, you believe it. You're going to do it. Oh, totally. <laughs> I would never totally. say because I can't do an Iron Man. <laughs> yes, you can. So, it, so, what dri so that challenge drives you now. Where do you see yourself going forward here? I, I, 8% Nation will have 10,000 agents. We will fill an arena one day. And I hope I'm part of that. You know, oh, I dude, really totally. want to be a huge part of that. You, you. You'll kick it off and end it, whatever. Uh, <laughs> there's no doubt that we will get there. Yeah. Putting on an event has helped the brand, helped get a lot more attention, helped a lot of agents, and, but it's also been the biggest challenge of my life. So when you get there, like, what's your, what's your ultimate goal? What, what's uh, this is the hard questions here. What, yeah. what, and again, it's going to change, but like right yeah, now, you whatever it is, it ain't going to be big enough. Five you know? and 10 years. What, what are you, what are you pushing I mean, towards now? What I really want mm -hmm. is to get to where eventually I'm traveling, doing, you know, on, on my own private jet. Sorry. I don't think it's nothing wrong with apologize. that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sarcastically. Uh, uh, and, and, and I'm speaking at events, helping agents every single week, you know? Yep. Uh, and, and maybe I got one in London, Australia, a lot of agents in India, who knows, you know? There's and, eight, I didn't know that. Oh, dude, there's I, millions I, I don't, of agents I, I, in India. I don't even have a uh, health insurance license, yes. <laughs> they sell, they sell so much life insurance over there, it's crazy. Really? Oh, yeah. Puerto the, Rico? You dude, I, 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 could be, I could have a translator Australia? and be speaking in India tomorrow, you know what I mean? Like, like, I didn't know the market was that big. Oh, yeah, dude, we That's get exciting. Supposedly, supposedly one-fifth of all of our leads that we get inbound through our website are outside of the country now. Wow, I had no idea. One-fifth, supposedly. This is a According huge, to my sales team. You're getting me excited. I, I was thinking this tiny little market. You're talking about Dude, this no, is a worldwide no. market. Absolutely. Wow. We do, we do, we'll be, yeah, we just set up a marketing campaign in Canada yesterday. So, I mean, yeah, we, we do stuff all over the. So, you really want to kind of excel that Cody Askins brand. That's uh, right. Of going, okay, we're here. And to not, help. not because it's my initials. Like, in, we, we, put my, we put my name on the wall. My wife did a couple of years ago. Right. Or what a year ago, I don't know, whatever. And I'm like, take that down. Let, you know, let's put Think Big or something, you know, because. Right. I, I am very confident. I do believe I can accomplish anything in my life, uh -huh. 100%. But the moment it's all about me and, and I'm this showy freaking jerk bag that nobody wants to hang out with, it's over. But you're not. It's over. Which is, I don't, I can't, how, no, I, mean, I, I hope not. That's not who you are. No, I hope not. I, I, like, I, I want to be That's your dude. magic, dude. That's not who you are. You, you can be the showy DB, like you said. And because you have a jet doesn't mean you're showy. Because you have a nice car doesn't mean you're showy. Yeah. You have a beautiful wife and a nice beautiful home doesn't mean you're showy. Yeah. But th that that's what makes you magical, man. It, it's it's uh, it comes natural because that's who you are as a person. You it, know? It need, everybody just needs to be themselves. You don't don't be somebody else just because just because you think somebody on Instagram wants you or because of this this random J Rob twenty three seventeen eleven <laughs> on YouTube or whatever it was says your says your script says sucks. you're a jerk. <laughs> you know? Oh, I'm gonna totally I gotta change my script now. You know? He may be on his first day of insurance and never sold before. Yeah. And back then, uh, my script probably did suck five years ago. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. Who cares? <laughs> it, it worked and I, and I made six figures. So yeah. whatever. So Cody Askins today, 30 years old. If you could go back and have a conversation with Cody Askins at 25 or 20, 25, what would that conversation look like? What would you tell him that you would do different? Because I, I think we all yeah. look back and would do something different. Dude, what would you tell the him? Good, the good part is I had, I had goals. There's some pros and cons. I had goals. Yeah. I, I worked hard. I was, I was driven. I thought too small. Okay, you big. I didn't invest in, in, in my personal development and self-improvement. And I didn't get around successful people. Wow. My, my, my dad was successful. Sure. But you got you to get around people outside your family. This was gonna hurt. Where, if you would have done those things, how oh much, gosh, how man. how Flip. much farther along do you feel you'd be? I'd be driving. I'd be flying in the jet home instead of driving seven hours. Yeah, I would. It's awesome that you can recognize that. Dude, it, I, I think turning people, turning thirty has just freaking slapped me in the face hard. Turning thirty was the big. I think it's why I did the half marathon and why I'm gonna do an Ironman. All <laughs> this like, other I'm crap. Old. I turned thirty. <laughs> And it was the biggest wake up call in my life. And, and I got to where for about a month while we were moving and everything else, my wife's like, babe, we just moved into this house for a couple of weeks and, and, and you won't even stop to enjoy it. You know, I'm like, I don't think I deserve it yet. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like that's yeah. why I don't want to buy the nice car. 
because I don't feel like I haven't earned it. You know, you're like, dude, you should buy a Ferrari or an Audi R8 or something like that. Like I, 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 I should. I would love it. He can. He can. He's got the money. But I don't think I, I, I want to earn it. You know what I mean? Right. I want to earn it. And and turning 30 waked me the freak up. Like it's 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 got me in this mode to just do crazy amounts of stuff. Like I'm sitting around yesterday. I'm sitting around yesterday with with, with and Brad and everybody's here, and I'm like, all right, I don't know what time it was, but I'm like crap, I got to do something. I'm, I'm just sitting here like, you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm like in go mode. And so that's why I'm going to challenge myself from 30 to 39 before I turn 40 to do, to do stuff that will, that will make me puke on my 20 to 29 year old self. That's great. That's what I said. If I want to yeah. go back when I was 25 and punch that guy in the face, I'm going to recognize him. Dude. So tell, to finish this off, tell your audience what Cody Askins is going to commit to bring to them. What are you mm. going to bring to them? What are you going to provide? Well, them? what are, what are I can, you going to do? I can tell you this. One of, one of my things I want to do mm -hmm. is I want to get to where I fly around the country, interview people like Nate Offert and some massive names in the industry, outside the industry, mega freaking earners. And I want to get to where I'm interviewing them, finding out what made them successful and putting them on our channel. And I'm talking about some big names, like massive names that would totally surprise you. Seriously. And, and I want to get to where I'm, I'm doing that a lot more. That's awesome. Yeah. Really and I want to go, and I want to go to them, you know, that's good. Well, there you go, guys. The Cody Askins. I, dude, I, that was a, I, that... I appreciate you. <laughs> I appreciate you coming out, man. Dude, he, he, un hey. Unbelievable dude. If you don't, if you don't know Nate, you got to get to know Nate. Friend him on Facebook. You're very good. My space. You go, I think my I, space. I, I go to my space. So, dude, so you great did, interview. So you have, you have two records now, right? You, this is the first, you interviewed me for the first time. Never did a podcast. Never was interviewed. Yep. And this is my first interview I've ever done. Boom. And I, I have to tell you, I, I like it. Yeah. Like, yeah. It. like this is, this is like, I learned, I learned so it's much. It's more man. comfortable. I, I, it's more comfortable being in that seat oh, than this one. Oh, this is great. One. I didn't like the other seat I was yeah. in. You know, and I got yeah. all the comments, you know, the guy talks so fast, he makes me give me the anxiety and what's, you know, oh my God, what's on his neck? He's got a choker thing. You know, I'm like, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, my wife gave it to me on our first Valentine's yeah. Day. It says, te amo, because she's from Mexico, yeah. which means, you know, I love you. She, it, the tree of life means new hope and new beginning. So like I wear it like a wedding, a reminder. Every day I look in the mirror, I see myself, and I think new hope, new beginning, my wife, and you know, and you have these people just, it's hilarious to me. You know what, you know what? I'm never gonna be that person that goes well, and starts putting stupid stuff on other people's stuff. I'm welcome, just not. I guess that's welcome to social media, right? Like yeah, I, I'm yeah. just like going, oh great, do I really wanna do this kind of stuff? But uh, yeah. this was awesome, man. I appreciate you coming out here. I'm Thanks, fired buddy. up about our, our mastermind we're gonna do, and I'm fired up about uh, Coach, we're, we're talking with Coach Michael Burt, Tim Story, yeah. I mean this is like, surreal to me. Sharon Lecter, the author, co-author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, built the whole uh, uh, Robert Kiyosaki entire yeah. billion dollar platform, was hired in by Napoleon Hill Foundation, co-authored the book, uh, uh, Thinking Grow Rich for Women, Outwitting the Devil in the Point. Like, I'm, I'm like nervous. Like, I'm not yeah, nervous yeah, to speak. Yeah. I'm like, going, okay, what am I going to talk about? Like, I, I talk a lot about Thinking Grow Rich. I'm like, I'll be like, oh, she's going to be slapping me when I get up here. Well, that's not exactly what Napoleon Hill meant. <laughs> but like, yeah. this is, this is, this is what, Having these relationships and being to be, uh, able to be around better people make you better. And I think that's, that, that's huge. It's something I'm, I'm out there doing as well, so. Go challenge yourself. Nate. All right, Thanks, have a good bro. one. Thanks for coming on, buddy. Hey, if you love this, dude, you, need, you got to know me. Now it's time to get to know the interviewer Nate offered himself. I've got the interview for you. It's right here. Click on that. We'll see you in there. You talk about impact, right? I don't think you do it for the money, even though you have a lot of money and you always look good, right? You're driving a sick car, but you do it for the impact.